Breaking news as we go on the air at noon. Republicans in the U.S. House are trying to seat a new leader. You're looking live at the House chamber where lawmakers are voting on Ohio Representative Jim Jordan's nomination. It's expected to go several rounds. At least a handful of holdout Republicans are refusing to give Jordan their votes, viewing him as too extreme to be the second in line to the presidency. Jordan is the chairman of the Judiciary Committee and a strong supporter of Donald Trump. Developing today, the Israeli military preparing for a ground offensive against Hamas as international pressure builds over the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Thanks for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. Tomorrow, President Biden will visit Israel in a show of solidarity. NBC's Jay Gray is in Tel Aviv with the latest. Hey there, good evening. From what's been a relatively quiet day here in Tel Aviv, not nearly as much work for the Iron Dome blocking some of the missile strikes uh, aimed at this area. It's, it's been quiet there and on the ground as well. There are a lot of people uh, obviously very tense about the ongoing situation, but very uh, pleased with the idea that President Biden is on his way to Israel. Talked with some older Israelis today who said never in their lifetime would they have imagined a sitting U.S. president coming into this area during wartime. And while the president is here to continue to support Israel and to show that the U.S. supports uh, their effort here, he is also coming with uh, a humanitarian focus as well. The White House saying that at every stop, every time he talks, he will talk about getting aid to some of those uh, two million or more trapped in Gaza who have not had access to water, uh, to fuel, to food, to medicine for the better part of two weeks at this point. So that's something he's going to drive home as well during his brief trip here. Let's talk about both ends of Gaza. You've got uh, Rafa, the border with Egypt, where uh, thousands of foreign nationals have been gathering over the last few days with the hopes that they could get out of the area. That hasn't happened to this point. That's something that continues to be a key topic diplomatically and talks are uh, working back and forth on finding some type of transport uh, for those foreign nationals to leave and for that aid that we talked about to get in. It is now stacked up outside of the border in Rafa and ready to be transported in and get to those who need it. Uh, but again, it's just not something that's happened. Then on the other end, the southern end, you've got a continued buildup of equipment and troops, the continued talk of a ground advancement at some point. We haven't seen that happen. What uh, Israeli leaders are saying is, is that they are going to do this on their terms and on their time, uh, but that just because it's been delayed at this point does not mean it's going away. So at both ends, no real movement onto the border at this point, but a lot of concern about where may, things may move next. That's the latest here in Tel Aviv. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you. New details today about the Illinois man who police say stabbed and killed a little boy and critically injured the boy's mother. Joseph Chuba was allegedly angry about the attacks in the Middle East. He now faces murder, attempted murder, and hate crime charges. Yesterday, hundreds packed a mosque near Chicago for the funeral of six-year-old Wadea al fuame the Palestinian-American boy. Police say Chuba stabbed the boy 26 times Saturday. Chuba was said to be upset about the Hamas attacks in Israel and feared the boy and his mother were going to hurt him. New information about that shooting at a trunk or treat event in Kirkwood. Police say a St. Louis County police officer is responsible. Just moments ago, Matthew McCullough pled not guilty to a number of felonies. He remains in custody. McCullough is accused of firing shots at a Halloween event for Tillman Elementary students at North Kirkwood Middle School Sunday. According to court documents, he began harassing people before he allegedly fired shots in the school parking lot. He's currently on unpaid administrative leave from the police department pending an internal investigation. Happening today, the cleanup of a stinky mess in University City is winding down. Lingering smells and flies have plagued Seafood City supermarket for weeks. Today, crews will be out there to clean out tons of rotting seafood and produce. The city government ordered the supermarket to close in late March after the health department found improperly stored products. The cleanup began about a month ago after neighbors began complaining about a foul odor and an infestation of flies. I didn't think they left the food behind. I didn't know what else. Was, you know, I didn't think it was still fish there. I thought they would take it away. It's terrible because, you know, it seemed like the wind always come from that direction and we, we get the smell. The building's owner is paying for the cleanup.
Well, we're going to try to get the wind to go in a different direction here over the last couple of days, and that's what we're actually seeing right now as we look on the Metro East side. Worldwide Technology Raceway looking nice as well. It's still very clear. I do want to focus on our next system that's going to arrive here uh, and change our weather just a little bit. Uh, it's not as impressive as the last one that impacted us, and it will not drop our temperatures as much, but you can start to see in Canada, and it's going to start to dive down. But until then, we have that wind in a different direction. It's more out of the west, southwest, and that's going to be a positive wind direction for us to warm up and make maybe mix some things out of the way. Otherwise, we're warming up nicely at this hour. Temperatures, though, are already in the mid to low 60s, depending on where you are. And, you know, big picture, we're at 65 in St. Louis, and we got more of that warm air where that wind is coming from. And that's what's going to help us warm up and stay warmer into the overnight hours. So this evening, we're going to see temps heading to 68 degrees and then fall into 60 by 7 o'clock. But we will track a little bit warmer temperatures overnight for us than we've seen the last couple of days and that chance for rain as we head into the next 24 hours. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Gary. Students in the Fox School District got an unexpected day off. Here's why. A water main break on campus forced the district to cancel classes. It affects Fox Elementary, Fox Middle, and Fox High School. No word yet on whether those buildings will reopen tomorrow. Businesses on Laclede's Landing are speaking out about homeless people. They want city officials to take action. Five on your side's Alex Fees has details about their complaints from City Hall. Homeless camps downtown are affecting business here, in particular most recently for people who do business on the historic riverfront district known as The Landing. Our partners at the St. Louis Business Journal report that Abstract Marketing Group, which has offices there, has complained to officials here at City Hall since before the beginning of summer about the conditions on The Landing. According to the St. Louis Business Journal, emails from employees at Abstract Marketing Group say they've experienced Aggressive begging, property destruction, drug use, and even armed robbery stemming from nearby homeless encampments just north of the landing. The president of a neighborhood association also says Mayor Tashara Jones' office has not responded despite of all their complaints. But St. Louis City Director of Operations Nancy Cross says the administration has met several times with stakeholders and tried to clear landing encampments four different times, but they were thwarted by difficult circumstances. No indication what those difficult circumstances were. Now this comes after city officials closed a homeless camp located here outside City Hall earlier this month. Mayor Jones said dozens of people who were living in tents on the front lawn were all moved to shelters and connected with necessary resources. The makeshift encampment was up for more than a month. Mayor Jones said at the time they were clearing out the encampment to quote, save lives and protect people. Now Cross says the current landing camp won't be removed until the city finds enough shelters and housing space and people are willing indeed to accept that help. Reporting downtown, Alex Fees, Five on Your Side. Still ahead, a popular drug used to treat COVID symptoms will no longer be free. What it could mean for you if you have Medicaid or Medicare. Plus, the new sports coming to the Olympics in 2028.